Welcome to another math lesson. This is Mr. Polarski. Today we're going to be talking about ratio and proportion. Lesson 3-4 from the Prentice Hall Algebra 1 Copyright 2009 textbook. This will be Unit 4. The objectives for today, I will be able to find ratios and rates, and I will be able to problem solve with ratios and rates. A ratio is a comparison of two numbers by division. We will concentrate on writing ratios in fraction form, but they can be written using a colon and the word 2. For example, 3 colon 4, 3 2 4, and 3 over 4 all represent the same thing. If we have a ratio of A to B or A over B, and A and B are measured in different units, then the ratio of A to B is a rate. Example 1 TA, using unit rates. A unit rate is a rate with a denominator of 1, and we'll show you how to get that in a minute. A brand of apple juice costs $1.56 for 48 ounces. Find the unit rate. Well, we start off with a rate in this problem, and in this problem we're comparing two units of measure, uh, how, how much something costs, and how much of it we're going to get. The amount that we're going to get. So in this case, we need to write a rate that compares the cost to how much we're going to get. So the unit rate in words that we're going to start with, or not unit rate, the rate that we're going to start with is the cost over the weight. Typically when we refer to things, we want the comparing the cost to the rate. Cost problem, the cost goes in the numerator, the weight goes in the denominator. And in this case, we get a, for $1.56, we get 48 ounces of apple juice. Notice I wrote the rates in there. So to find the unit rate from this rate, we have to make the denominator 1. So in this case, we need to uh, simplify the fraction by a factor of 48, or we need to divide $1.56 by 48, simply put. And doing that calculation, that gives... 0 0.0325. Watch how I write this over. Now 48 divided by 48 is 1. And that's ounces. 1 ounce. So we changed $1.56 for 48 ounces to the cost for 1 ounce, which is just over 3 cents. This is 0 0.03. This would be the pennies place right here, the 3. So that would give us just over 3 cents per ounce. So our unit rate in this case is 0 0.0325 dollars per ounce. And this problem here, example 1TB, using unit rates, it's a little more complicated, not much more complicated than the previous problem. On sale this week at Giant Eagle, you can buy two 48-ounce bottles of Juicy Juice for $4.00. Find the unit rate for the juicy juice. The twist in this problem is right here. Instead of just getting one 48-ounce bottle of juice, you're getting two. So the first thing we have to do is multiply 48 by 2, or 48 ounces by 2. When you do that multiplication, that gives 96 ounces. So that's our amount. The cost for these 96 ounces of juice is $4. We set up our ratio, our cost over the weight. You might see the word of amount in here instead of the word weight. The cost is $4. The weight or the amount that we're going to get is 96 ounces. Like we did in the last problem, we're going to write this so it has a denominator of 1, so which we're getting the price for 1 ounce. To do that, we need to divide Technically, both of these by 96. 96 divided by 96 is 1. And 4 divided by 96, that gives us 0 0.0416, and the 6 repeats. Remember, that's dollars in the numerator. So the unit rate for this juicy juice on sale at the Giant Eagle is 0 0.0416 dollars per ounce, or just over $0.04 cents per ounce. 
continuing our work with unit rates. In 2000, Lance Armstrong completed the 3,630 kilometer Tour de France course in 92.5 hours or 92 and a half hours. Part A of this problem is asking us to find Lance's average speed and to write a rule to describe the distance D he cycled as a function of the number of hours he cycled, H. So the first thing we need to do is find his average speed. And to calculate the average speed, you take the distance and you divide it by the time. It's a variation of the distance formula that we're going to talk about in a moment. Distance divided by time. So in this case, we take 3,630 kilometers or kilometers. And we need to divide that by his time, 92.5 hours. And that's going to give us his average speed, his kilometers per hour. Now, to do this, we, in essence, need to divide 3,630 by 92.5. And technically, to reduce the fraction to a unit rate, we divide both of them by 92.5. And that will give us his speed for one hour of travel, his average speed. So we take 36.30. Divide that by 92.5, and that gives a decimal number, and it appears to have a repeating pattern. It's 39.243243, so we'll round that to 39.2, so we'll change this equal sign to approximately, and that would be a kilometer, so we're traveling at about 39.2 kilometers per hour. So we need to write a rule to describe his the distance D, uh, he cycled as a function of the number of hours H he cycled. This comes back to the dependent and independent variables idea. The distance depends on how long he travels for. So the distance is equal to his speed, which is 39.2 kilometers per hour, times the amount of time he travels. So the function we write here for the second part of the part A, uh, write a rule to describe the distance. The distance is equal to, or the distance Lance travels is equal to, his speed, 39.2 kilometers per hour, times h, how long he travels. Um, this You may be more familiar with the distance formula, the classic distance formula, dirt. Distance is equal to rate times time. It's just a variation using a different variable h for the t time, and instead of using r, we're actually using his rate. So in problem b, or part b of example 2t, we're going to use this function we wrote in part a, Lance's distance is equal to 39.2 kilometers per hour times the number of hours he's traveled, to figure out how long it will take Lance to ride 295 kilometers. So in for d, we'll substitute 295. And on the right-hand side, we have 39.2 times h, and we want to solve for the number of hours. So we'll divide each side of this equation by 39.2. 39.2s on the right cancel. Divide out, leaving h on the right. And 295 divided by 39.2 is equal to approximately 7.5. So the answer to B is 7.5 hours.